Don't ask how I got this number. We met a while ago, I think. Or we should have done. There's a new property on May's bank foreclosures I'm pretty sure you're gonna find interesting. 87% sure, according to our current algorithms. <laughs> it's an underground bunker, manufacturing facility, and money-making opportunity. Take a look on the site. Oh, I think I can do it cinematic. <laughs> I think I can. Oh, oh, turn to now. Turn to the hill. It'll do. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm the Missing Sock. Welcome back from our Grand Theft Auto 5 Online. And today we're going to start up uh, some gun running. A simple episode, though, where today we are just going to go through all the locations of the bunkers. See, here's the bunker right here. Very cool. So it's a new add-on on the map for those that haven't played recently or in recent times. There's a lot of changes in the last year. Like since last summer, they've uh, brought up the company and then expanded it with the CEO warehouse stuff later and the MC stuff. There's been a lot of stuff over the last year. Yeah, a little less than actually. Yeah. So this is the uh, Chumash bunker right here. And this is the closest one to the city. So some people look at that one here. Yeah, extremely hazardous, unexploded ammunition. Do not proceed. Use of deadly force authorized. Strictly no trespassing. <laughs> oh. Well, it's a good thing I read that after I walked around on it. <laughs> uh. Alright. So, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, locations. And uh, we'll go through them all. Now, I thought just to make it easier, we'll go through them in the order of the um, uh, cheapest to most expensive. Alright. So let's uh, head off and do that. So here is the cheapest bunker in the game. The Plato Forest Bunker at 1.1 million 65,000. Okay, so this is the cheapest bunker. And uh, it's right here just south of Plato. Plato. However you like to say it. <laughs> There's the uh, log cabin that some people might know because you know a lot of destinations there. Sites here picks up stuff there. You sometimes pick up a stolen car there for the CO warehouses. So you'll kind of know that spot just, just a little bit further than that. I guess you would just drive off road here go through the forest, and I guess this is why it's called the Plato Forest Bunker, and right there, but it actually looks pretty easy to get to, and it doesn't have its own little road, so, well, none of the, none of the other ones do either, but the, this one kind of is hidden a little bit from the road view, but it's pretty easy to spot from the air, as you guys can see, even in the uh, nighttime here. Yeah, so I thought we'd check it out at the beginning of the day before we get into the other ones. So let's just land here. Like I said, this is the cheapest, and the, the, to some people, I'm going to be doing it as the first bunker. Right. So that's uh, that's a pro. That's cheap. You know, saves a lot of money compared to others. You can save a million dollars on this one. Uh, a little over, actually, on the most expensive bunker. So it saves you a lot of money, which to some people means it kind of, you know, just over a million dollars saved uh, on the most expensive bunker. You could think of it as paying for your, uh, your MOC truck, you know, that you get with us later on. You could think of this as... Um, um, an MOC truck, right? Uh, or paying for your MOC truck. What did I get a request for? A multiplayer request? Yeah, and this is our first bunker, so we might as well read our, uh, our, uh, our emails here. War stock, become the war zone. War zone, become the war zone. <laughs> Purchase a mobile operation center today. Just what I was talking about. Huh. Oh, it does just show you a picture. And that's your, basically your truck, your mobile operation center, right? So if you pick this cheapest one, you could think of it as paying for your, your MOC, you know, for it, in a sense. But I would also say some people think of it as a con. A thing against it is that it's cheap, meaning that a lot of other people pick it, meaning that you might not be left alone too much. I don't know if that's true, though. And it is kind of isolated way up at the north of the map. Yeah. Bees Bank, calling all preppers. Are you ready for doomsday? Invest in the only nuke-proof underground bunker you will ever need. Head on over to foreclosuresmazebank.com for details. Well, we're going to go in there right now. Now we're going to read our first description here. So let's go in here. So you just go into the internet. And uh, we go to Maze Bank. Right there, same one as you use for your MCs. And it might be easier, some for some of you might, uh, might find it easier like I do, just to click on bunkers from there. And then it makes it a little less crowded. Okay, so here we are at the most, uh, the least expensive bunker, right up here. Plato Forest Bunker. Ever wanted to give something back to the untouched woodlands that have given you so much peace and joy? Have you considered a thousand tons of concrete and titanium? 
If you're looking for that elusive dovetail between crazed militarism, militarism and environmental diligence, you found it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, buy from 1.1 million, 65,000, like I was saying. All right. So let's pop back out here. Nice and isolated. Night noises right now. I'll pop up top of the bunker here. And you've got some nice uh, sea views here, which is really nice. As you guys can see. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, I don't know about the uh, location. I think that might uh, turn off some people. It is isolated, as you can see, way up on the top of the map. All right, but some people like that, being way up on the top of the map. And some people run MC businesses out here and rather enjoy it. So for those people, you might really enjoy having your uh, bunker right there and save a million dollars plus, depending on which one you like otherwise, um, on doing it. All right, so that's the Plateau Forest bunker, the cheapest bunker. All right, let's go check out the second cheapest bunker, the uh, Raton Canyon bunker. All right. Raton Canyon? Raton Canyon. Jeez, I'm having a hard time with my words today. <laughs> See you back in a minute. Oh, that's a great view. Nice sun. All right, here we are at the uh, Raton Canyon. Raton Canyon? Raton Canyon? Bugger. Second. All right. Uh, stay, Savage. Stay. All right. Here's our bunker. So, guess no real custom signs on this one, but it's nice and isolated, as you can see. So this one, I would definitely say, is among the isolationists, you know, a uh, bunch. Okay. So, like we were saying, there's no real best bunker. They're all the same in a way, so it's really up to the player, you know, how isolated you want to be or how easy access you want to have, how much money you want to save, how much money you want to spend, um, you know, and, and even how personal you want the bunkers to be. Well, we'll get to that in the future um, versus how business-like. But some of the add-ons you can give are more personal, you know, like carrying around in your in your MOC truck, you can carry around your personal vehicle, you can have a personal living quarters in there, not very company like stuff, you know, so it's kind of like, do you treat this stuff like a toy of your own, your own personal bunker, your own personal little space property, or is it a place for you to make money doing gun running, and all that stuff, and I think to different players, it's uh, it's different things, you know, um, some people have a, have a have a leaning one or the other, some people might do both, though. So anyway, back to the uh, the bunker at hand. This is the Raton Canyon bunker. Uh, it's another one in the north. It's the second cheapest bunker. It's 1,450,000. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look on the map here where we are, so we're right there. Okay, that's where we are. So in the northern parts of the map, but not as north as the uh, cheapest, the Paletto, but it is a little bit down. It's still still a ways up from some of the other ones that are around here that we'll get to, and uh, and Chumash ones, and the ones along there, and the Fort Zancudo one. So here we are right here. But I'd say isolation-wise, it's in a great spot, you know, between the canyons here and everything. You've got the train bridge. Oh, you're even going to catch a train going by. There it is. How about that? Doo -doo. <laughs> yeah, I like views like that, as you can tell. Even though, yeah, inside the bunker you won't see these views still. You know, it's nice when you come in and out to see these kinds of things all the time. Or to be in a nice uh, spot like this, I could appreciate it. You know, I could understand why some people would like this one. Regardless of it being the second cheapest or not. Very cool. Yeah. If I was looking for a place to, to get away, you know, like in the apocalypse, in, in the, if it was actually happening and I lived here in San Andreas, I don't know, I might consider this one. This one's not too bad. All right. So let's have a look at the uh, description on the website here. Uh, quickly go in there. There we go, Raton Canyon Bugger. Raton Canyon is a federally protected wilderness area, which all but guarantees the kind of peace and solitude your newly converted missile silo deserves. Plus, when the recycled air is making you nauseous, you can pop up for a lungful of the purest breeze in the state. <laughs> nice. So that's right there. As you can see, it has road access, but it's not the best road access. You know, these are dirt roads for the most part, but again, if you're an isolationist, that's not too bad. That's a nice spot. But, you know, like as far as access goes, it's not too bad to get to this main main highway road over here or to the bigger highways over here. It's not, not, the, not the end of the world to have to travel. But uh, it is an isolated spot. So it all depends if you like that or not. Yeah, very cool. All right. <laughs> all right, on to the next one. On to the third one, Lagu Zancudu at the, uh, at the uh, military air base. All right, let's head over there. Nice. Yeah, nice looking sun. All right, so here we are at the uh, Lagu Zancudu. 
uh, bunker, and uh, it's kind of a nice spot right outside the uh, the uh, army base, the uh, Fort uh, Zancudo army base, just over that hill right over there. All right, that's got the sign right here. So different signs for different ones, I guess, if that matters to any of you. Yeah, welcome to Los Santos Air Base Bunker. Observe all warning citations. All right, it's got a nice little easy drive up. You know, we've got a little country road up here, nice and isolated, and here's the bunker. Yep, standard signs there about uh, ammunition. All right, here's the top of the bunker. Uh, let's get on top. So for those that care about the views on your bunker, actually it's not too bad. Um, you're kind of isolated, and you got lots of water. With water views, I like coastal views, as we all know. <laughs> and you've got the airbase over there, and that means you get actually uh, jets that fly over. I don't know if we're lucky enough to catch one, but while I was uh, coming down and not quite ready, there was a jet that landed, and there's helicopters that fly over and things like that. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Actually, if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I like this one. I like them all. Yeah, so let's have a look at the uh, description here. Oh, before we do that, we'll have a quick look on the map. So there we are on the map. All right. And the air base is uh, just over here. The, uh, the army base, I should say. Okay. Now, I should say that that's, uh, like I said, a feature, and it's also a consequence. Some people don't like it because it kind of inhibits you. They can get in the way. It means when you fight some cops um, and, and police and things like that, um, as some of you guys might know, sometimes the game has a tendency to spawn in the, um, the army security guys against you, like a police force, right? They have their own kind of police force. They drive around in jeeps and stuff, and they'll come at you too. And that's fine, but uh, a lot of people find they're a little tougher than your regular police, and uh, they can do a little bit more damage. So having a place like this here to some people is a little too close to them for their liking. And a little too close to an area that you have to watch that you don't fly over and set off stars and stuff. That's, of course, all depending on the missions you're on. If you're not on any missions, they set off the stars. Quite often, if you're on a mission, it's disabled, and you're able to uh, fly over things like that without having to worry about things like that. But you'd have to try it to find out, I guess. <laughs> But like I said, it depends. Uh, to some people, um, I think a lot of people like this, and uh, and a lot of people um, uh, don't like that. So it's kind of 50-50 for that. Now let's, uh, let's head in here and read our description. Laguzancudo Bunker. Nestled among the sand dunes, enjoying year-round sunshine, the Pacific gently breaking just a few strides away. <laughs> if you can ignore the constant earthquake warnings and the threat of flooding, this is as close to paradise as a subterranean bunker is going to get. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so like I said, it is kind of picturesque. You can hear the birds right now while I'm there. All right. So let's move on to the next one. So as I said, that is the, um, the uh, third cheapest um, uh, bunker. Okay, so it's got a decent price. It's uh, 1.5 million and 50,000. Awesome. Very awesome. I like that sound. All right. Yeah. So here we are at the uh, Chumash um, bunker. I think that's all there is. Yeah, Chumash bunker. And this is the uh, fourth most expensive, or fourth fourth cheapest, I guess you could say. Yeah, fourth cheapest uh, bunker. It, that's uh, at one point six million and fifty thousand. We'll have a look at that description in a second. So, oh. <laughs> I've been stumbling a while. That's funny. There we go, up on top. I like how it sounds like metal. Well, I guess it is metal. Yeah, it is metal. It just looked like, uh, kind of like it, would, it was stoned over to me and and uh, sanded over, but I guess you could still hear the metal when you walk on it. Yeah. I wouldn't jump on it anyway. All right, so. Nice view. Really nice. So here at Chumash, you got a great view of the ocean. I really like this one for that reason alone. This is also known as the most uh, south bunker. Okay, so we're going to have a look on the map here, see where it is. So there's our map, and here we are. Now the uh, Fort Zancudo bunker would be right up here, and we are right there. Just uh, north of Chumash, technically. There's Chumash there, and we'd be just north of it, right there. Pretty cool. So uh, some people um, like that, because it's nice and close to the city. So I think it's as close to the city as you can get. The farmhouse not, not, is, is fairly close, but I don't think it's quite as close as this is. Plus, it's right on the highway. Now, to some people, that's also the con. The, the con against it is that it's it's so close to the city and it's right on a highway, meaning that a lot of people will pick this, and there'll be a lot of general traffic, even from people that haven't picked it, going up and down this highway and and flying over and uh, being in the city and all that kind of stuff. So, if you want it to be isolated, some people think this may not be the best place. I don't know. I, I I'm not sure that really matters too much. 
but uh, I do like that it's close to the city, and I do like that it's got these great views, and I do like that um, that you're so close to the um, uh, uh, to, on the west coast, like I like. So it's west coast, south, close to the city, yeah, close to my other stuff. Yeah, and it's got a decent price, being that it's only the uh, fourth cheapest, uh, 1.6 million, 50,000. Let's have a look at that description. And back in I go. All right. Yeah, there's no GPS finder in here for some reason. I don't know why they didn't give it to us on this one. All right, Chumash Bunker. Even when you go in here, some people think, oh, you have to go in. No, no, see? <laughs> it's still, I think if you buy it, then it says GPS it, which is kind of strange. You have to buy it to get GPS to it. I don't know why, but it's very strange. But anyway, let's uh, hop back in there. All right, Chumash Bunker. I know what you're thinking. Who cares about sea views when you're 50 feet underground in a hermetically sealed nuke-proof bunker? Well, just remember, it doesn't need to make any sense to add a fat premium to the resale value. This is how you climb the ladder. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, one million, one million six hundred fifty thousand. All right, let's get on to the next one. All right, everybody. Here we are in Grapeseed, which is in the north of the map. And there's our bunker right down here. All right. Some of you might be familiar with this area. Lots of MC runs through here sometimes, depending on the uh, businesses you and your friends might have. And of course, the, the main reason is the airport right here. The uh, Grapeseed Airport, I guess, airstrip. Uh, the most northern actual airstrip in the game, as far as I know. So, a lot of people know where that spot is. Oh, oh, better keep that out. So let's land. All right. All right, there you should do. <laughs> All right, so up in the farming area here, up in Grapeseed, you've practically got a little road access here, actually, a little, little dirt road. You can see the signs up there, a little dirt road that comes down here, kind of, sort of, dirt road, if you could call it that. But compared to other ones, you actually have sort of a road that almost leads right up to your uh, bunker. And here's the bunker, strictly no trespassing. So this one has a little bit of a different sign, actually, on the sides. A lot of them uh, tend to have the uh, same ammunition ahead sign, but this one just has a strictly no trespassing beside it. Kind of more discreet, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, views, you've got the lake over there. You've got the mountains, for those that like that. And farming area. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look here. So the, um, uh, this one in Grapeseed is the, the fifth cheapest, or fifth most expensive, I guess, uh, depending on how you look at it. It's uh, 1750000 Okay, and this is in the northeast part of the map. So we're going to have a look here first on the map. So there it is right there. All right, to some people, they like that. I'd say a lot of people like this because it's uh, isolated. I can appreciate that. I like playing on, you know, a place like this way up here. Not too many people are going to come bug you. Not too many things go by here. And when they do come through here, you're going to be able to see them if you're paying attention on your map. It's real easy to see when people are in your area. You know, and you get left alone up here, you know. Uh, a lot of people that want to, you know, go to war with other people, they'll tend to be in the city and tend to look where other players are. And not too often will they be up in Grapeseed. Yeah, I don't think. So, that can also be a con, though. It is all the way up in Grapeseed. It's a bit of a travel distance. Um, it is isolated, and some people aren't big on that. Uh, the road access isn't too bad. A little bit of dirt roads and things like that, but you've got this main road right over here, and it's not too far from the highway. All right, let's have a look on the web. All right, Grapeseed right here. Oop, takes a moment for it to zoom in. All right, Grapeseed Bunker. Amid all this talk of the death of small-town America, it's important to remember that somewhere like Grapeseed has an advantage over the big city. There's plenty of space for the 1% to build subterranean layers in preparation for the apocalypse. Hey, the Heartlands aren't going to rejuvenate themselves. <laughs> That's funny. Now, these are great descriptions. All right, 1.7 million. Well, 1,750,000. Yeah. Very cool. All right, on to the next one. Yeah. Okay, everybody, here we are at Route 68, Bunker. Well, we will be in a second, anyway, <laughs> if I pay attention. Some people might know this area, well, a lot of people know Route 68 just cuts right through the middle of the map. Okay, but it also, uh, that's the uh, one of the MC clubhouses that some people may have. And it's also the main one from the Bikers DLC when they brought out the, um, the, uh, the screenshots and all those kinds of things. It was mainly from this location. Some people still remember that spot for that. And there it is right over here. So there is the Route 68 Bunker. Okay, so not bad road access actually. Anyway, for the uh, for a mid-map uh, 
Uh, bunker. So I'm just going to land it right here. Kind of up this hill here, so it's a little bit off-road if you ask me, compared to some of the other ones we looked at, you know, that were fairly close to at road access. This one, unless I'm missing something. And feel free, guys, um, to say any comments in there about your own thoughts on your own bunkers, if you have them, or if you've been, uh, you know, if you've heard from friends about advantages and disadvantages of them, uh, feel free to let us know. So, yeah. Like I said, I don't think there's a best or, bu or, or worst. I think it all depends on preference and the kind of player that you are. But yeah, but anyway, back to my point. You see the roadway over there, and this, this is a bit of a drive compared to the other ones all the way up here. Well, it's not a big deal. It's kind of flat, but it is kind of off-road in a little bit compared to the other ones. So, regular signs, dangerous, extremely hazardous, unexploded ammunition. Do not proceed. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Got a bit of a yellow, yellow paint there. I think some of the paints are a little bit different, unless it's my imagination or they just faded. But it seems a little different than this one. We've got the uh, the mount, Mount Chiliad, up in the uh, distance there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, some decent uh, desert views. You know, you got the whole mountain range across. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Let's have a look on the map. So there we are right there. The Route 68 bunker. Okay. And this is the sixth most expensive, or lead cheapest, depending on how you look at it. But I guess you could say mid-price. So it's the sixth most expensive uh, bunker. At $1,950,000. Okay. And there it is on the map. And as you can see, it's got some road access. Not too bad, like the main Route 68 going through. Right over here, and um, you know you've got highways. It's kind of in the middle of the map, so I guess you know if you're one of those people that wants to have um, uh, the same distance all the way around, you know, like a nice central location, then this is probably one of the better ones for that. It's uh, actually not too bad, mind you. There is a few that we're going to go through that are all in this area, but uh, but that's a nice central location. And some people might already have their MC right there and might like it uh, being close by. All right, let's have a look at that description, and we'll go on to the next one. Maze Bank, foreclosures, and where are you, Route 68? Route 68 bunker. On one side, you hear the bubbling stream of Zancudo River taking its share of bloated corpses from the Alamo Sea to the coast. On the other, the distant sound of whooping and gunfire from nearby Harmony. <laughs> whooping and gunfire from nearby Harmony. And beneath your feet, a, a sprawling nuclear fortress. Welcome to Eden. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's head on. And now we're going to go on to the Grand Sonora oil fields, which is actually right over there. Yeah. Do, 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 do. All right, guys. Now I might actually just keep you guys right here because the next ones are actually um, right in order, so we don't even have to cut back and forth or anything for this one. So the oil fields, the Grand Sonora oil fields, is actually the next one up in price, the seventh up in price, two million thirty-five thousand. And so just over two million, two million thirty-five thousand, and it is right over here. So maybe you guys can see it already, or right there. Okay, right over here in the oil fields, and just over from the uh, Route 68 one. So if you want to be away from other people and their bunkers, this may not be the best three that we're going to go through here. At the same time, though, people keep to their own. They're, they're, they're going to be watching you go to your bunker and they go to theirs. You know, like, I don't know if there'd be too many crisscrossing. Or if it even matters. You know, it usually doesn't. But some people it matters. Some people it doesn't. <laughs> Another fall over. Uh. Oh, he doesn't want to get on top of this one. Hmm. Why not? Yeah, this one's a little different, a little more brown on top instead of the green from the coastline. So they do change the look a little bit, slightly. Only a little bit uh, on the concrete itself. The yellow's not quite as bright on here, just a little bit more faded, but same same as the other one. All right, so the view, about the same. Nice mountain range, it's in the middle of the desert, the oil fields. Yeah. I guess it's nice and open. You know, you can you can see pretty easily. There are places that people could hide on you if you were sniping, but it's, it's a nice and open feel, though. You can see a lot of things coming. All right, let's have a look at the description for this one. And we go. This takes it a moment. Okay, right over here. See, here's the three that we were talking about. There's our Route 68. There's the oil oil fields, the Grand Sonora oil fields, and now we're going to be going to the Grand Sonora Desert next, right over here. So, Grand Sonora oil fields bunker. If you're a budding survivalist looking for a decent simulation of a nuclear wasteland, you could do a lot worse than the Grand Sonora Desert. <laughs> this cozy property was originally built as an end-of-the-world shelter and general hangout for cryptocurrency pioneer. 
for a cryptocurrency pioneer. And if that doesn't scream high quality, high build quality, what does? <laughs> nice. So just over two million at 35,000. All right, let's head on over to the next one. Which is almost, almost not even worthy of flying over to it. But I do want to need my savage here, so we'll take it right over there. So the next one is the Grand Snore Desert. And I guess it's called that. This is the oil fields, right? Route 68 behind us. And of course, desert is just over here in the desert. So where is it? It's right over here. So down the same road, just a little bit further down this dirt road. And there you go. There it is. So it does have some decent road access, I suppose. Another very open feel. But it is kind of sort of behind the hill on the one side, I suppose. That's how they have to. There it is. Nice view of the mountains. Very desert feel if you like that stuff. I guess it is a pretty good place, a more natural place for a lot of people to have their survival bunkers, I suppose, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would think a lot of people do have them there. <laughs> if they exist in real life, which I bet you they do here and there. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at the uh, description here for this one. And it's right there on our map. So we already checked out the map. We know it's right over here. You know, it's right beside the airfield, though. So this is a good one about this one. Grand Sonora Desert Bunker. Due to high levels of unexplained radiation, <laughs> the Grand Sonora Desert is home to various varieties of flora, fauna, and underground bunkers seen nowhere else on the planet. And this baby is triple lined with tinfoil all the way around, so you're definitely safe. Definitely. <laughs> cool. That tinfoil will help you. So this one's at um, 2,120,000. Okay, and that's the Grand Sonora Desert. It is the eighth most expensive um, property. Okay. Yep, 2,120,000. Let's flip back over here. Now, uh, looking on the map quickly here, guys, a lot of people do like this because the airport's right here. Meaning that if you call in your personal aircraft, kind of like the Savage I'm in right now, um, or other things like your Hydras or, or whatever, it should be uh, appear right here. And it's one of the better spots for things like that. So one thing to keep in mind is, you know, things like your company, things where you're coming and going, your MCs, uh, but also for other people, it might be uh, where your transportation is going to show up, um, you know, and uh, where you can get your personal vehicles and things like that. And so it's nice to know it's right over here for a lot of things. And that doesn't get much better. But mind you, a few others that we're going to get to um, also are close by to that. But it's a nice spot for that reason. All right. So now we're going to move on. There we go. And uh, go on to the uh, Smoke Tree Road. All right, so I'll see you guys back here in a moment. Yeah. Come, Savage, away. <laughs> I haven't been flying this too much lately. It's a great helicopter. I wish it was stronger. It should be stronger. It's supposed to be an armored uh, attack helicopter. But it is quite deadly. A cannon on it. And the missile launcher. The missile launcher you can just keep on fire. So one, two, three, four, five. And you can just keep on firing. It's awesome. Yep. All right, let's go off to Smoke Tree Road. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, they're going to find me. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Just one star. Go away. Go away. <laughs> All right, now they don't recognize me. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> All right, everybody. So here we are at the uh, Smoke Tree Road. Yeah. So Smoke Tree Road, kind of cool. Got a cool name, I guess. Um, yeah, here it is. It's got some decent access. It looks like just sand, but it's actually almost like a drive right up. Nice and easy. Nothing, no real obstacles that I can see. You know, it's nice and straightforward. Nice and easy. Yep. I was getting ready and I uh, jumped out of my Savage by accident. <laughs> and it crashed and uh, gave me a star. But that's okay. It brought us, once again, to where we wanted to be. Which was um, the bunker right here. The smoke tree bunker. Yeah. So, uh, let's go have a look at the um, at the description for this. So this is the ninth most expensive bunker. Okay, and it's uh, 2.2 million dollars and 5,000. Strange prices sometimes. So where are we here? There we go. Smoke tree bunker. Uh, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. There's smoke tree bunker right there. 
This discrete site in the Grand Sonar Desert holds the record for the most unidentified bodies excavated during construction. <laughs> And if nothing else, that means it's popular, popular with all the right people. Huh. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So, um, yeah, 2.2 million uh, and 5,000. So not too, not too bad, I guess, but it is getting on the more expensive side. So this is the, uh, the third most expensive, I guess you could say, the ninth uh, up in price, right? It's compared to the whole entire 11 bunkers that there are. Uh, it's kind of in the mid-east of the map, as you can see. All right, and it does have decent access um, to the Route 68, to the highway right here, and of course to the uh, airport that we were already talking about to be able to, to get your um, uh, helicopters and those kinds of things. It literally just go down this road and right over here, I mean, it doesn't, yeah, I think it's even better than this one. Although that's still pretty good for that one, but, it, but it's just right over here. And I guess the next one we're going to go to in a moment, the, the uh, Thompson Scrapyard, it also has that advantage too, of being able to quickly go to the airport and to the highway. But I think this one's almost a little bit faster. Hmm. I guess it depends on what you guys think. So here it is. Again, the smoke tree bunker for $2.2 million. All right. Let's drive around the corner to the uh, Thompson Scrapyard. All right. So I think this is actually gang territory around this area too, isn't it? Or is that a different scrapyard? No, this is definitely the scrapyard. All right, guys. So, like I said, I've I've been uh, taking my time with it, and doing it with you guys. So I'm not exactly sure where exactly it is. Oh, I see it. It's not in the scrapyard. That makes sense because the scrapyard is gang territory. So I was kind of wondering about that. But it's actually right over here. Uh, I was being silly. All right, right here. There we go, that makes much more sense. And again, nice, good, flat access to the road. If you care for that kind of thing. So there it is right here. Yep. Okay. There we go. And as you can see, the highway's right there. So I think this is probably one of the closest ones to the highway. Well, I guess on the other side, the Chumash ones and uh, the, it, well, Chumash, yeah, Fort St. Kudo is not too close to the highway, but Chumash is right on the highway. But on the east side, this is definitely the closest one that way to the highway, I think. Yeah, kind of nice. That way. Of course, it also means that, um, you know, you're not very isolated, you, but, you know, you can always see people coming. It's nice to have that highway access. And as we were saying, you can drive right on the road there to the uh, airport and pick up your, uh, air, your uh, helicopters and all that fairly easily, just down the way. Yeah, not bad. So let's have a look at the description here on the map. Well, on the Maze Bank map. Thompson Scrapyard Bunker. Like any other phase of the property market, Armageddon is really all about location. <laughs> on the one hand, you want the perfect seclusion on, on the, of the desert. Yeah. On the other hand, you want to be able to stagger to a 24-7 without dragging your knuckles through too much fallout. <laughs> So you want to be able to stagger there. Stagger to a 24-7 without dragging your knuckles through too much fallout. Well, look no further. On both counts, this lovely prospect in Blaine County is all set for the mushroom cloud. Well, I guess this one's all about the survival and the scrapyard being all there and everything. And you've got the highway that we were talking about and the airport right over there. And it's 2.2 million and 90,000. So this is the second most expensive one. Yeah, tenth up in price. Depending on how you look at it. Okay, so it's starting to get pricey as around these ones. All right, so now we're going to go off to the farmhouse one, and we'll be right back in a moment with that. All right, come on, Duke. Let's go. Hmm. Yeah, let's call in, um, so you guys can see what I mean. Why not? Let's call our savage back in. Hello, this is Pegasus Lifestyle Management. How can I help? Thank you, sir. Your spectacular aircraft is now ready for you at our nearest airfield. And as you can see, it's like right here. And the other one's even closer. So, so you guys can see what I mean, how quick it is and easy it is to pick up your stuff from the airport. So it's kind of a nice feature that way. All right, 
Now we're just going to fly right over here to the north to the farmhouse. And I guess I'll bring you guys back here in a second, but it literally is just over these hills. Yeah, maybe not. I'm pretty sure I'll find it faster than I can bring you back in. <laughs> All right, so there it is. Yeah, I thought that was it. Apparently it's got a little bit of a glow. It's almost funny, it stands right out. There we go, okay, that was just a glitch. Well, that's all. Sometimes it glitches like that. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I'm pretty sure it's uh, on all con all versions, like the uh, the new the new versions anyways, the uh, PS4 and the uh, Xbox One and the computer. But every now and again, you see the load funny, the new stuff, like the offices. Sometimes they load and you can see the empty block for a second. Um, and then sometimes, uh, well, you just see that load kind of funny. Well, that's good, because I was hoping it didn't look like that, because I was going to say, geez, that stands out like a sore thumb. It totally doesn't look like it belongs. Now that looks like it much, much better. Now that we're coming up on it, now it blends right in a little bit better with the horizon. Mind you, I'd want my bunkers to be even more hidden, personally. <laughs> Especially if I was paying millions of dollars. Well, I guess for a bunker, like a real bunker in real life, 2.2, 2.3 million dollars isn't, uh, isn't that much, really, right? I think they'd be a lot more than that for uh, underground bases, yeah. So, All right, well, here we are at the farm. The farmhouse bunker. So, if you like the farmhouse, then, then this is a great one. So we got the signs right here. It's got some road axes, dirt roads, but you know, it looks not too bad as far as dirt roads go. They're, they're fairly flat and uh, wide. We've even got some night lighting. And there's our bunker, your bunker, that you can drive right up if you pick this one. This is the most expensive bunker, the farmhouse bunker. And it is uh, 2,375,000. Got a nice view of the mountains in the distance. Sunsets, I'm sure. Sunrises would be over this way. Otherwise, just kind of a nice farm community. And this is one of the more southern bunkers, too, as you'll see on the map here. So on the map, you can see it's, uh, as far as bunkers go, it's one of the more southern ones, especially on the east coast, on the east side. On the west side, I think Chumash is the most, which is right around here, the, the Chumash uh, one we were looking at earlier. And right over here, this is the more southern one on the east side, the farmhouse. So let's have a look at the uh, description here. Farmhouse. Farmhouse Bunker. The Grand Sonora ecosystem comes in three tiers. The wannabe hippies, staging a made-up fire festival. The roaming gangs of mutants, who prey on them for sustenance and sport. And the paranoid software tycoon, hoarding enough underground munitions to start World War III. That's right. You're the top of the food chain. <laughs> that might be the best description. They're all pretty good, but that's hilarious. That's great. Yep, so most expensive one, the 11th highest price, and the uh, out of the 11 bunkers, currently in the game anyway, uh, at the uh, gun running release. I don't know if we'll ever get any more. Probably won't, but you never know. They could give us new locations in the future. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, yeah, and that's in the uh, lower southeast, and yeah, 2,375,000. All right. All right. Very cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. hope that helps you uh, with your own decisions. Um, I'm not sure. One thing I couldn't get a good good uh, answer on, and maybe somebody could tell me, somebody who made the wrong decision and changed it, but uh, I haven't been able to find out if you get good trade-in value for this or not. And what I mean is that different things, Rockstar's <laughs> very, very rarely consistent. Uh, they like to do different things with different things. But basically, when you sell off what you have and you get something else, so say you bought this bunker and then you went to another one, Sometimes you get the money back. Sometimes you get half of it back. Sometimes you get none of it back. Um, you know, so it'd be nice to know if they give you any kind of trade-in values or things like that for them. If you're able to change it without uh, too much cost, basically. Yeah, things like the car warehouses. As far as I know, to this date, uh, the, the car warehouses you can change your car warehouse anytime you want, and uh, it does not suffer any penalty. So you won't pay any extra, uh, other than the extra price if you're buying a more expensive car warehouse. So that's an example of what I mean, is that with the car warehouses, there's no penalty, and with other things, there is. So I could not find out for um, at this point uh, if the bunker has a penalty or not, if you bought this and then change your mind, or you bought one of the other ones and then upgrade it. Yeah, so that's one thing I've been, I'm have been i going to find out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, that's all 11 bunkers, and I'm going to go pick one and start uh, getting started. Yeah. But so far, I'm liking this. I like the idea of a bunker. I'm not sure how I'm going to treat it. I think a little bit of both. We'll check it out both ways, you know, business-wise, like the gun-running-wise, and personal-wise. You know, 
Because like I said, to me, like if, I, if you never played gun running, if you're never interested in, in making money through gun running, it's still awesome to have an underground base. I mean, who doesn't want an underground base? And even the truck to be able to haul around your personal vehicle, um, assuming that you bought the right bay. We'll get to that in the future, but you can have different bays in your truck and put different things there. We're going to get that in the future. But, um, but yeah, you can have it as very personalized as you want, like just for you, like a rich man's place. Or you can have it very business-like, very gun running. Like It's unfortunate they don't quite, uh, it's hard to do both because things like your truck can only fit so many uh, extensions. You'll find out when we get there, but you know, you, you have to decide, I guess, with some decisions because they basically, you know, give you five things but only room for three. So you have to make some decisions there and there. And decisions on your location, how isolated, how easy, how much money, how cheap. <laughs> All right, everybody, I am the Missing Sock. Hope this helps you. We'll see you again next time. If you're new, you should subscribe. And uh, hello, all new subscribers. Uh, thanks for subscribing. It's uh, free and it really helps us out. Thanks, guys, everybody. And it's great having you with us. And I'm going to head back to the city, make some more money, maybe, while I decide uh, which one to buy. I don't know. Uh, at this point, I don't know. I, I really like a lot of those locations. I might go Chumash, even though I don't think it's a great choice. But for me, I like, I like being in the city a lot. I like the West Coast, as a lot of you, a lot of people who have watched our previous episodes know, and I like those views on the ocean and stuff like that. So, and I like that it's on the highway access uh, in Chumash. But uh, I can see how it's going to be a busy spot, but it's a nice spot. I don't know. Of course, uh, you know uh, the last ones, the, all the other ones we looked at. Uh, there's a lot of nice ones there. And like I said, in real life, if I wanted a, a bunker, I might be tempted to go with Grapeseed or um, uh, the Raton Canyon because those are pretty isolated, uh, leave you alone kind of places, you know. I don't know. Very cool. Hmm. Very, very cool. So far, I'm very happy with that. And, uh, you know, at, the, at this time, you know, there could be more stuff in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, a lot of people already know that uh, Rockstar is planning new vehicles and new other stuff to come in the future. It's hard to say when, but more gun running stuff in the future. It's hard to say if we'll see any more bunkers. I don't think so. But we will see more gun running things. But I just thought I'd mention that just in case they happen to give us some new stuff that way, and we'll see it then. All right, everybody. See you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, it doesn't quite fit very well, does it? You have to get it perfect. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.